on our first athlete, Golden State Warriors basketball player, Kevon Looney. of the shoe, the just the material and everything is just fitted so well for the uh, best athletes in the world and I'm very proud to be with Anta. I mean, we've done some great things together and I see great things on the horizon. And for myself to be with Anta maybe a decade has been just incredible. I mean, I'll never forget signing with the brand in 2014. A lot of people back home were very were questioning my decision and they had no idea about ANSA and I just received a lot of gear they gave me at the time and I was so inspired to be a face of such a global brand that I was more than willing to sign and to be here now in a nice shoe, that's like a dream come true and there's nothing better in life than when you see a vision and it comes to fruition. So I appreciate everyone at ANSA and we have so much greatness ahead of us. to see him and I'm just rooting for USA to I know they're representing our, our country so well and it's just uh, awesome to see how global basketball has become and especially here in Manila to see every game is packed and to see how much the fans really love the game is so inspiring for it, myself and them. I always heard about how passionate the fans are about basketball and their love for the game uh, and like you said I growing up seeing Kobe and LeBron and different guys come here and and the crowds that will come watch them play. Uh, it's been amazing. So for me to actually be here and uh, to get to see them close, I'm really excited to see it and see the players and different things like that. So, uh, you no, know, I'm super excited. I, I remember as a kid, my dad used to tell me about boxing and drilling and dealing, all these different things like that. So for me to actually be here and uh, at a sport event is going to be really exciting. Well, uh, to USA, I mean, there's a, some of the best young players in the NBA. Uh, Steve's doing a great job, and the great thing about when you watch Team USA is people are the guys put their egos aside. They don't care who leads the team in scoring and rebounding and steals. All that matters is when you play for Team USA is winning gold, and that's beautiful to see because in the NBA or whatever professional league around the world, it might not be as unified and as much 
I want to, uh, there's still a bunch of pride involved, but it's just different when you're competing um, country to country, and it unites the world in a sense. And when it comes to the Bahamian basketball, I couldn't be more proud of what they've accomplished the past few weeks, especially Chris DeMarco, Buddy Heal, DeAndre Hayden, Eric Gordon, and the rest of the Bahamians. Those guys had the biggest win in their, in um, our country's history, as far as beating Argentina twice on their home soil. Not an easy task. Argentina is one of the best teams in the world, and it's just going to do wonders for the country. And when that time comes, I will give it serious consideration just because of what the Bahamas has meant to the Thompson family, especially my father. He never had a chance to play for the national team just because they didn't, they just didn't have the chance back in the 70s or the 80s. And now my brother's coaching with them is also very cool. But uh, right now, I'm really focused on the season. And when that time comes next summer, I'll give it consideration. Okay, thanks, Kayden. Next question is for Kevon. Uh, Kayden said that Steve... Special, and I just love to pay homage to him. I mean, watching him and Floyd fight were such monumental moments in my life, and I mean, watching him fight Marquez or whoever, I mean, he was a real global superstar, and I'm also a huge fan of Bruno Mars. I mean, he's like, he reminds me so much of Michael Jackson. I love his music. It's the same feeling. It's global. It's for everybody, and uh, I'm... I know Lil's excited. We're really just excited to go out and see all the sights, taste the local cuisine, see some art, and just see what Manila has to offer. I mean, this has been a, like, we haven't even touched on before, the thriller in Manila was such a huge moment in American sports history between uh, Mr. Foreman and Ali. So we're just honored to be here, honestly. Favorite performance of mine ever was game six against OKC in wow. 2016. Which was glad you say, glad you say Game Six, Twenty Twenty Three. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Um, so, I know you've talked about that game against OKC a ton, but is there any like behind the scenes story about that game? How you felt that day? Did you know you were going to have a great game that maybe you could share with us? Um, I, I do remember. I mean, Lil probably. Lil was just a rookie back then. This guy was a teenager, which is crazy to think about. But when I look back on that game, I think about losing game five or game four. We're down 3-1. And Draymond Green had made one of the best speeches I've ever heard about how no one thought it was possible we could win 73 games. And no one thinks it's possible we can come back from this deficit. And he said, let's go shock the world. And that right there gave me a ton of confidence just I like to say empty the clip as a shooter. Just you don't want to leave anything out. Like you don't want to go home that day or night and say, gosh, I should have taken that shot. I should have been more aggressive. And I went to the next, every game that series with that mindset. And you don't plan on having nights like that as an athlete that kind of just happened organically. And that is a very great memory for me, obviously, because at the time it was a playoff record for threes. And when you do those things, you really shock yourself and they're out of body experiences. That year is still kind of painful to look back on just because it was such a beautiful regular season. And to lose at Cleveland still hurts. But I'll forever cherish that game. Because like you said, it birthed uh, kind of an alter ego for me as far as game six. And I was lucky enough to have some great game sixes after that as well. But I was just in such a great zone that night that I still get chills when I look back and think about it. And uh, there's nothing better in pro sports than silencing the opposing crowd. And I've never heard it so quiet in an arena in OKC. You could just feel how deflated they were. Ironically, we were very deflated the next series, but it was still a great memory for us. Thanks a ton, Clay. And for Kevon, what does it take to be a great rebounder in basketball and in the NBA? Uh, it takes a lot of a lot of effort. You gotta be relentless. Uh, you know, you gotta know your shooters. You gotta know your teammates. You gotta know your offense. Uh, uh, and that kind of goes a long way. So it takes a lot of time studying. Uh, you know, it's something that's it's kind of hard to practice sometimes, but you gotta figure out what makes you a great rebounder, what makes you special at it, and what you know your physical attributes that you can use. Now I'm not the best leaper, but I know how to use my body, my arms, and 
I know where my, you know, I got some of the best shooters in the world, so I, they kind of consistent. I know how they go to miss, I know where the ball is going to be at. And uh, I take the study and watch them shoot after practice and learning about them and kind of carry over to the court. And uh, that's kind of what makes me a, a good rebounder. Thanks, guys. Enjoy Manila. Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. Well, yeah, I think so. Especially with another month ahead, I think that's perfect timing to get in even better shape. And after the last three years or so, I'm very hungry to play in that All-Star game again because I was a constant there for so many years. So you want to be there, of course, as an NBA player, it's the pinnacle of talent in the in basketball, besides the NBA Finals or the FIBA World Cup Championship game or the Olympic Finals. So that's a huge goal of mine, and I am ready. And for Kevon, I've uh, been a fan of your game since college days with UCLA. And you've, wow. well, back then you've been drawing key D comparisons, but obviously you've turned out to be a different type of player. But how would you describe your journey so far, especially in terms of you know how it panned out being an NBA champion and being with the Warriors? Uh, that has been a, a great journey. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of adversity. Uh, like you said, you know, coming out of college and high school, I had different uh, comparisons, but you know, go through injuries and uh, you know, I always took pride in being able to adapt. And luckily, I got the chance to come in on a championship level team and learn from them guys and you know, change my game and change my role to help our team continue to win championships. So uh, it's been a great journey. I, I've been playing with a lot of great players. I've seen a lot of great basketball and, and played in a lot of, you know, you know, some of the biggest games in basketball history. So it's been a, a great, a great journey, uh, a lot of great opportunity, and uh, hopefully I got a lot more basketball left, and a lot more, you know, history and things to, to make. And I'm just excited. Thanks, guys. Did your homework, man? Just watching little basketball related question, Tony. Thank you so much. Boys Night Out is super important. That's where, you know, uh, a group of guys become more than just, uh, you know, just more than just friends. They become brothers. Uh, that's how we won so many championships by you know, having great nights out and carrying it over to the court. Uh, you know, you, you gotta be friends, you gotta be, you have fun on the court, you gotta do all the little things, you gotta have trust. And, and that all comes from a, a, a couple of nights out, you get to really know a guy, and uh, it goes a long way. Clay, same question. How important is a boys' night out in building the trust and chemistry between a championship team? Oh, it's extremely vital. I mean, a boys' night out could mean many things. You know, it could be a boat day, it could be mm -hmm. a brunch, it could be a nice, fine dining dinner, it could be a disco, it could be a golf session, it could be a surf session. I mean, we all just need those times to bond as men, and I think uh, what's so important, just like Thin Lizzy said, the boys are back in town. It feels great to <laughs> just get out and just be kids again, because that's what life's about, is just staying youthful and having fun. How many times a week do you guys go out and hang out? What's I mean, a good, what's we went a good out dancing last night, we had a great time. We, we tried to get an invite, I think. <laughs> <laughs>